Well, the Whitecaps lose down in L.A. 1-0 the final against the L.A. Galaxy. Major League Soccer Commissioner Don Garber has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Arsenal advanced to the FA Cup final after beating Wigan on penalties. And Everton, Jay, well, they just keep rolling in the Premier League while, well, Barcelona and Bayern Munich are struggling. Good evening and welcome to Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk right here on AM650 Radio in Vancouver. My name's Tyler Green. You can follow me at Tyler Green FC on Twitter. Of course, the show at Soccer Talk 650. Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk is also available online via a webcast and live streaming at www.am650radio.com. Thank you for listening to us live or on podcast. Like Kia Vancouver on Facebook and be entered to win four tickets to see the Whitecaps face LA, the rematch next Saturday, April 19th. The draw date is this coming Tuesday, April the 5th. So get on Facebook and like that page very, very soon. Well, yes, the, the Whitecaps did lose to the Galaxy, and we'll be talking with defender Stephen Betasher in just a couple of minutes uh, here on Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk. He'll be joining us down uh, from the locker room in L.A. But elsewhere in Major League Soccer, well, was Toronto FC losing, Montreal Impact drawing, and the Seattle Sounders winning late on two goals from Clint Dempsey. Also announced today was that Major League Soccer Commissioner Don Garber has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. He will undergo treatment, uh, and uh, from the report that the disease has not spread, and uh, Commissioner Garber should make a full recovery. That's good news for the commission. We send him well wishes for a speedy recovery and a healthy recovery from us here at Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk. I've uh, interviewed Commissioner Garber a number of times and uh, wish him all the best in his recovery. Well, the Caps had a very solid road performance, probably their best this season in the three-row matches so far, but they just couldn't get a point. They lack the scoring punch to get at least one goal tonight. They've only gotten one goal through three road matches this season. The Caps had four shots on target, but there's a new stat in Major League Soccer called big chances. They had zero created, zero missed, and zero scored, resulting in a big fat zero on the scoreboard, and that's simply not good enough. And those are the type of things that are going to keep the Vancouver Whitecaps out of the playoffs. At some point, to make a run in the playoffs and to even get to the playoffs, you have to do something on the road. Yeah, you can win at home as much as possible, but you need to find some way to get some goals, to get some chances to do something on the road. And the Whitecaps just haven't been able to do so. And did they do enough, perhaps, to get something next week against the Galaxy? Well, perhaps. They'll need to defend a little bit better. They... For the most part, defended extremely well. David Osted was spectacular in goal and, and got um, a few very key saves for the Whitecaps. But due to a simple lack of concentration at a key time at the start of the second half, it was Robbie Keane doing what Robbie Keane does best, and that's scoring goals. And he did just that, and that pretty much killed the Whitecaps. They need to create more. I wrote about it in this week's edition of 24 Hours Vancouver on Wednesday. Stats are great, and I used a couple right there, but when you think about it, you can make those stats sound great. They can be positive. They could be fantastic, and the Whitecaps did that in a column that they wrote on their, on their website about Pedro Morales. I countered that in saying, hey, you know what? Every positive stat, you could also make it negative. And every negative stat, well, you could turn around and make it positive. And Pedro Morales, well, he didn't create any big chances today, and he was doing that before. But when you look at it, there are enough little things that the Whitecaps did in this game 
to make you think that they have a chance heading back home, turning things around, playing on their surface, playing in front of their fans, and having the comfort of being at home to make it seem like they have a good opportunity to win at home. And that's what they're going to need to do. Because if you look at it, and in reality, the only stats that matter are the ones of the wins and losses. The Caps, they can rebound. It's easy enough to do. But right now, the teams that are in front of them are all even on games. Some of the teams that are behind them, including the Galaxy, they've got a bunch of matches in hand, and they're very close in points. So the Whitecaps need to start beating these Western Conference teams, and they can't drop points against them. Killed them last year, and it might just kill them again. Major League Soccer Players Association released the salaries for MLS players this week. Some surprises across the board in relation to what players make. Some got very big raises to some raised eyebrows. Some deserve it. Some don't. But it leads to our barber pool tonight, brought to you by Another Fine Cut, online at anotherfinecut.com. And we've based it uh, to the white caps. And which white cap salary surprises you the most and why? You can tweet us your thoughts with the hashtag BarberPoll on Twitter at SoccerTalk650 or TylerGreenFC. You can also email us, SoccerTalk650 at gmail.com. Or you can give us a, a buzz here, talk about the barber poll or about the match that the Whitecaps played today, 604-280-0650. You can also check out our Facebook page for that question and get a little bit more involved. Facebook.com slash Soccer Talk Van. The Barber Pool is brought to you by anotherfinecut.com. Get the authentic straight razor shave that reminds you you're alive. Three locations, Gastown, Yaletown, and the Financial District online at anotherfinecut.com. And if you weigh into the barber pool this evening, you're el eligible to win a GC to another fine cut for a hot shave or haircut. I hit up the guys at another fine cut for my haircut and shaving needs. I go back and forth from Killjoy to Dominion Barber. Simon Fudge earlier this week did the same. We'll get his review in a second. He'll join us for the starting 11 coming up in just a minute. You can check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash soccer talk van. We have a few announcements this, that uh, we've made over the last week or so, some contests, some trips. But on that Facebook page, it has our special Mother's Day, Soccer Mom Mother's Day contest presented by Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk and, of course, Trinity Salon and Spa. So make sure you check that out. Like it. Share it. Share that post. Like that post. Like our page. And you can win a fantastic, relaxing Mother's Day prize for the mom in your life. All the details again at the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Soccer Talk Van. As always, the crew here at Soccer Talk is uh, decked out in Umbro gear as we drove in wearing our Umbro jackets. We looked like a gang of uh, the black Umbro shirts. Umbro, of course, is the official sponsor of our Fantasy League. Like the Facebook page and follow the links to sign up. Multiple ways to win. In April, the highest single week score will walk away with our own, with their own Umbro gear. Christopher Bromley, right now after the first week of April, he's got the, the, the lead. Show Me the Mane is his team name. 76 points in the first week of April. He's the one to beat. If, uh, if you get more than 76 points, say, this week, hey, you're the guy to beat. You can do that. Uh, there's two more weeks. A little too late to sign up for this weekend, but uh, you can definitely get in for the last couple of weeks of April to see if you can get the highest single week score of any of the Fantasy League teams in, in our competition. And you can walk away with some Umbro gear. Coming up in the first half of the program, as mentioned, Stephen Betisher will join us uh, in a matter of moments. Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk contributor Simon Fudge and I will dive into the starting 11. We'll talk Champions League, players' salaries, title winners in the different leagues, 
and Beckham's new scotch. As always, you can weigh in, like I said, on any topic here on the show, on Twitter, Soccer Talk 650. Disagree with us on our thoughts on the starting 11? Hey, let us hear about it. We want to hear what you have to say. Paul Dolan, former Canadian international sportsnet soccer analyst and Umbro, Umbro rep, will chat with us around 1045. And we'll recap this uh, Whitecaps game. Recap the Caps, a 1-0 loss to the LA Galaxy down at the StubHub Center. The first half is brought to you by BC Soccer online at bcsoccer.net. Follow them on Twitter and Instagram at 1BCSoccer and participate in their weekly contests and learn more about what's happening in soccer across the province. In the second half of the program, we'll check in with the injury report. David Sandals from Expert Physio online at expertphysio.ca. Tonight we're going to talk about prehab training and, and what that looks like for the Whitecaps in terms of trying to avoid injuries uh, because the the Caps played in L.A. David has a uh, David Sandals has a fantastic Tommy Lasorda story about sports medicine. Sure, it's Tommy Lasorda's baseball, but hey, it's it's all L.A. and everyone's a superstar in L.A., right? That's coming up at 11 o'clock tonight. And uh, also, we're going to connect with uh, Damon Halicek. In the second half of Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk, uh, Damon is uh, part of the Donnelly Group and is working very hard to help build the supporters' culture here in Vancouver. So we're going to talk about that at 11.15 this evening, uh, whether it's English Premier League sides, whether it's some of the supporters' group here locally with the Whitecaps. Uh, the Donnelly Group is, uh, is, is really trying to build that supporters' culture here in Vancouver. So we'll talk about uh, what he has planned and, and what some of the things that they have going on at the Donnelly Group to make that happen. And uh, I think Damon might have a special little giveaway for later on tonight as well. Do you have a favorite team in the Premier League? Maybe it's Spain, maybe it's Germany, maybe it's uh, the Whitecaps here locally. Well, we might uh, give you a chance to pick out which jersey you'd like. We might have a fun little prize coming up later in the show in the second half. So make sure you stick around for that. And as always, we'll have the manager's rant. Key questions. Actually, we're not going to have key questions tonight. Christina, our executive producer, went to school only to find out that it was a pro D day when she went to uh, do some interviews. So we didn't have those today. And the Whitecaps were on the road, so we couldn't have any fun with them this week. But uh, it shall return next week. But don't forget, Hot Fudge coming up tonight at 11.45 with Simon Fudge. If you see one thing, do one thing, listen to one thing. If there's one thing you need to do this week, what should it be? Simon Fudge will have that for you at 11.45. And we'll also, of course, finish up the show with the final cut brought to you by anotherfinecut.com. Once again, you're listening to Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM650 Radio online, am650radio.com. My name's Tyler Green. Is Landon Donovan the greatest player to ever put on a Major League Soccer jersey? The MLS Players Association releasing the salaries. Should they? And who will advance in the UEFA Champions League? Kia, Vancouver Soccer Talk contributor Simon Fudge and myself will debate those issues in the starting 11, as well as Stephen Betasher, Whitecaps defender, all coming up next. Follow us on Twitter at Soccer Talk 650 and at Tyler Green FC. This is Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk on AM 650. A similar beautiful game is played out every day at Kia Vancouver, where people like you make great scores on the value loaded Kia vehicle that suits their needs. Right now, Kia Vancouver has throwback pricing on all new Kias with prices like they were 15 years ago. Plus, 0% financing up to 84 months. All-wheel drive credit of $500 on select 2014 Sportage and Sorrentos. Beautiful. Kia Vancouver, the power to surprise. At KiaVancouver.com and on Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon.
Guys, if you've got a soccer mom, Trinity Salon and Spa has the Mother's Day special just for her. Like the manicure that cleanses, exfoliates, and finishes with a beautiful vegan polish from Spa Ritual for fresh, renewed hands. And the Glamour Wash and Blow Dry, so she can ditch the ponytail and have that red carpet sexy mom hair again. Find out more at trinitysalonandspa.ca. Top votes by Best in Burnaby, Georgia Strait, and soccer moms everywhere. Trinity Salon and Spa. Mind, body, beauty. 4138 Dawson, Burnaby. Uniglobe One Travel presents the ultimate sports experience. Three big summer days in Chicago, departing July 29th. This fully hosted trip includes airfare, transfers, four-star accommodation, tickets to see the Vancouver Whitecaps FC play, and a baseball game at Wrigley Field. Plus, you'll also get sightseeing trips, entrance to attractions, and some group meals. Get information on the Soccer Talk Facebook page at facebook.com slash soccer talk van. To book, call Neil at Uniglobe One Travel, 604-677-1495. Limited seats, book now. A similar beautiful game is played out every day at Kia Vancouver, where people like you make great scores on the value-loaded Kia vehicle that suits their needs. Right now, Kia Vancouver has throwback pricing on all new Kias with prices like they were 15 years ago. Plus, 0% financing up to 84 months. All-wheel drive credit of $500 on select 2014 Sportage and Sorentos. Beautiful. Kia Vancouver, the power to surprise. At KiaVancouver.com and on Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. If you want to wake up feeling healthier, start at the place that strives to deliver the healthiest beds in Canada, Innovative Sleep Solutions. Owners Dave and Terry have over 50 years of combined sleep industry experience. They'll find you the perfect bed, and with their 120-night comfort guarantee, if it's not perfect, simply exchange it. This week only, get the Simmons Beauty Rest Queen Pocket Coil Bed, introductory priced from $6.99. Innovative Sleep Solutions. They won't be undersold. King George Boulevard near White Rock. Innovative sleep.ca we're back this is kia vancouver's soccer talk on am 650 now here's your host tyler green first half of kia vancouver soccer talk brought to you by bcsoccer.net we'll hear from sportsnet soccer analyst paul dolan coming up at 10 45 tonight as the whitecaps lose down in la one nil the final time now for the kia vancouver showroom showroom interview kia vancouver is the number one retail kia store in bc last month selling over 70 new kia vehicles to tons of local soccer fans you can be next visit kiavancouver.com or 396 southwest marine drive at yukon whitecaps defender stephen betisher joining us now uh stephen obviously um a, a tough result down in la your thoughts on the match tonight yeah, definitely a tough result uh, today, but I thought we played well. Um, you know, we played well for 89 minutes. At one minute, we just, you know, shut off and, uh, you know, Keane's a great player and finished. Uh, but, you know, it's, 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 it's tough. It's, uh, you know, we played a good performance on the road, and you try to get that clean sheet, and I thought we did a lot of things right in that game, and uh, I don't feel like we deserved a defeat. But, you know, that's the game for you. Uh, obviously, with the, you mentioned that sort of that uh, that one minute with the lapse of uh, concentration, uh, what happened from your perspective, and and how do you alleviate those t type of things from the next matches? Yeah, you know, um, I think we need to go look at game film and see exactly what happened. Uh, I know he just kind of came straight down the middle, and we just got to make sure we uh, stay touch tight with uh, with our men, and we just got to got to look at the film and see what we uh, did wrong and improve. I think that's the main thing. Just uh, learn from it. You said you liked some of the things that uh, the Whitecaps did tonight. What were they? Say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, you said you liked a few things that the Whitecaps uh, did tonight. What uh, were those things? Oh, yeah. You know, I definitely think we were organized defensively. Um, you know, not just our back line, but the whole team. And we really, we really moved as a unit. And, uh, you know, we put pressure on the ball when we had to. And we just really stayed organized. And, unfortunately, we didn't really – take advantage of our chances that we had and uh, I think we can also improve on that but um, you know it's, it's tough you know I thought we played well and we didn't we didn't get a result from it. Stephen Betisher joining us here on Kia Vancouver Soccer Talk uh, defender with the Vancouver Whitecaps obviously is uh, the, the missed chances or the missed opportunities to p potentially score some goals the, the biggest factor that you need to do next week to make sure that you get those three points? Yeah, you know, I guess that's the the good thing about when you have a back to back like that playing the same team. Uh, if you're on the losing end, you get a, a quick week of redemption playing them again. So, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna watch game foam. We're gonna learn from it. Uh, we'll see if we make any changes. I know Carl does a 
great job, you know, analyzing each team and finding their weaknesses. So uh, we'll hopefully prepare this week and uh, have a have another chance at them. Steven, the way that you played in the first half, you you had large spells there where you felt looked like you were in good control of the game. Was it frustrating once you went a goal down uh, that you were chasing basically for most of the second half? Yeah, you know, I thought we did really well in the first half. And uh, I, to be fair, I thought we did real well in the second half as well. Just that one minute where, uh, you know, we just switched off. And, uh, you know, at the very end, obviously, we had to kind of go for it and uh, be a little risky. But, um, you know, I thought I thought we did a good job overall. First half was, was real, uh, real organized as a unit defensively and as a team. And it's just it's unfortunate to start off the second half like that. You always want to start off well. And uh, we didn't do it today. Steven, now uh, six games in in your uh, Whitecaps career here in Major League Soccer. How are you finding uh, this this new side and, and Vancouver in general? Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's, uh, it's great. Beautiful city. The people are so kind over here. Really welcoming. So I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm getting getting used to, you know, different crowd. Uh, you know, San Jose, is, San Jose is a little bit smaller and uh, a little more intimate over here uh, at BC Place. It's a lot larger crowd and uh yeah i'm getting used to it it's, it's definitely fun i'm enjoying it well steven uh, thanks for taking some time out to uh, join us after a tough loss and uh safe travels home and all the best next week yeah i appreciate it thanks for having me steven Betisher, vancouver whitecaps defender joining us here on kia vancouver soccer talk for the kia vancouver showroom interview kia vancouver is the number one Kia store in bc last month selling over 70 new kia vehicles to tons of local soccer fans you could be next. Visit KiaVancouver.com or visit them in store 396 Southwest Marine Drive at Yukon. As mentioned, Paul Dolan coming up at 1045 tonight to help us with the wrap report of the Vancouver Whitecaps. Again, the Whitecaps losing down in LA 1 0 the final. Let's get into it now. It is time for the starting 11 with myself, Tyler Green, Tyler Green FC on Twitter. And contributor Simon Fudge. You can find him on Twitter at SimonFudge74. And uh, let's get it going, Simon, with number one. And we're going to go to the UEFA Champions League to start. Who do you like to advance to the UEFA Champions League final? I would like a Madrid derby in Lisbon for me, Real versus Atletico. Um, and if that was to happen, I think it has the potential of being one of the more memorable UEFA Champions League finals in recent history. These two clubs right now, throughout the course of this competition itself, just the games they've played in the Champions League, I think they have played the best soccer. Um, and I think if they were to get to that final, the, the excitement of it and what they could actually deliver in the game itself would be something we will remember for a long time. Well, I'm going to look at a rematch from a couple of years ago between Chelsea and Bayern Munich. Red versus blue. Uh, I just... Um, you know, as much as uh, those, you know, a Madrid derby would just be absolutely fantastic. I just get the sense that uh, Bayern Munich, with nothing to play for in the league, and you can almost tell with the way that they're performing in the league right now, they are focused solely on the Champions League and will get it done. And I just can't count Chelsea out right now. They just seem to be able to do all the, the little things to make things happen. And uh, that's what I'm going to go with, a Bayern Munich-Chelsea final. Number two, Thibaut Courtois will be allowed to play for Atletico Madrid in Champions League semifinal versus Chelsea, the club that owns him, when the two teams meet in the semifinals. How much more intrigue does this add to the fixture? I think it adds a little bit uh, extra to the fixture. Uh, it's the sort of that future goalkeeper of Chelsea, perhaps, against the old guard of Peter Cech and, and the goalkeeping situation there. So I think it adds quite a bit to this little rivalry. And uh, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be which player, which goalkeeper can sort of outduel the other one. And it uh, not only could determine which team moves forward in the Champions League, but it could determine which goalkeeper is the starting goalkeeper for Chelsea next year. So I think this adds uh, quite a little bit of uh, quality intrigue to this fixture i think it adds intrigue as well and 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 as you as you mentioned i think the performances he could put in against chelsea uh not only could have the impact on what atletico does and if they reach the final but the questions of should he come in and replace peter check next season also harkens me back to 0304 when fernando morientes on loan to monaco from real madrid ended up 
taking out his parent club with the goals that he scored in the quarterfinals of that competition, which obviously led them to play Porto in the final that year, which was a Jose Mourinho's Porto, no less. Number three on the starting 11, does the advancement of Atletico Madrid hurt or help their chances of winning the Spanish title? As much as I'm really keen for Atletico to win La Liga this season, I have a feeling it may actually hurt Diego Simeone's squad that they've made it this far. Barcelona at this point only have La Liga to concentrate on. They're out of Champions League after being knocked out this week. And juggling both these competitions at the business end as they are at now, it could be very difficult for them. I think, you know what? I think it's going to help them. And the reason why I think it's going to help them is because they have to be competitive week in, week out. It's going to help them in the league. It's going to help them in the Champions League that they have to stay focused and stay turned on. And that's, uh, I think that is going to be what helps them. You know, it, like I said, it, it, there's a possibility that Bayern Munich that are just struggling in the league right now, it could hurt them in, in, in a sense, but it's just that competitive nature isn't there for the league right now and that could uh, I think help Madrid in, in the terms of that they have to focus solely on on both things and they have to stay hyped up and energized so I think it could help their chances of winning the title number four David Beckham is all as a brand all of his own and now he has his own scotch coming out would you drink a Beckham branded scotch well I, I don't know if I would drink it on a regular basis but I would try it, definitely. Why not? Um, definitely would uh, give give it a shot, see how it uh, stacks up to some of the other scotches out there. And if it's good, I'd continue to drink it. If I preferred other scotch, I had a taste. I came, I saw, and that would be the end of it. Not thinking <laughs> I'm going to go down that road. There's just... Many fine scotches and whiskeys out there to savor the palate for me. I have my favorites, and as such, I think for me going forward, I will just stick to those. Number five, will the winner of Liverpool and Manchester City on Sunday determine the Premier League winner? Not yet. Uh, the winner of this game would take a big step towards the EPL title for me. But there's more than enough games left for twists and turns to take place here towards this title chase. Reds, uh, Liverpool still have Chelsea to play at home. And City's run-in has a very interesting game away to Everton, who are now in a position to claim a Champions League spot on May 3rd, which is basically the, the, the next to last weekend of the season. So a uh, big step forward, but no, won't decide the title. For me, I think it will. Uh, I think if Liverpool wins it, they could just, in fact, have broken Manchester City's backs. Vice versa as well. If City win it, I think Liverpool will lose a little bit of belief. So I do think that whoever wins that game tomorrow will go on to win the title. Number six, the Major League Soccer Players Association reached their player salaries for 2014. Should they have done so? I think so. I think it adds a little bit of intrigue. I think it makes people realize that these players don't necessarily make a lot of money and I think that makes it uh, make them seem that much more um, just like the everyday kind of person. Um, and, and why not? There is negatives to it as in terms of, well, this guy got a huge pay raise, but he play, has played terribly over the last year and stuff like that. But it, I do find it very interesting. Would I trade it to find out what allocation money was getting traded and et cetera? Probably. But I don't have a problem with them releasing the player salaries. I have a bit of an I have an issue with it in a sense because it, for me it makes the fans and media like make more of a fuss over what a player is making and then on a regular basis taking what he's actually been valued at from that salary and relating it to his performance. And I think in a lot of ways that it kind of almost muddies the water a little bit when that happens. And for me, uh, it it puts almost more emphasis on the player and his salary and what he's making and less on what he's actually doing on the pitch, and it, which is where, for me, should be the focus. Which leads us to number seven, which is uh, you know very similar, but do you care even what a player makes, whether it's high or low? I, just, I think you mentioned it before. It makes interesting reading, but it doesn't really. I don't really care all that much to know how much a player is making. 
we, we we're usually generally aware of how, what a player will make in MLS. That'll come through various sources, but um, it doesn't offer a lot of news for me in terms of actually seeing those figures, especially when we've been used to seeing salaries being published for public consumption now for quite some time. I'm I'm gonna say, yeah, I kind of do. I like to find out what these guys are making, and obviously their own association, the Players Association, is releasing these numbers. But I think it is interesting to see where these guys make and how much. Uh, they're valued at and how much they're worth and I think it adds that little bit of extra intrigue to the game that we don't often see like you said it's um, would it matter if a guy is making x amount of dollars no but I think it does add a little bit of intrigue and it's fun to to find out what some guys are making number eight is Landon Donovan the greatest to ever play in Major League Soccer Uh, you know I think you could argue that a guy like Thierry Henry is the best soccer player to ever play in Major League Soccer, or perhaps a guy like Robbie Keane. But I think overall, through his years of service in Major League Soccer, Landon Donovan is the greatest to ever play. He's got the stats to basically say that he is the, uh, well, he is going to be the number one goal scorer. And when you look at his assist rate, he might uh, capture that as well. He's second place right now and has an opportunity to potentially get a number of assists, and uh, be number one on that ranking as well. So I think that he probably is the greatest to ever play in Major League Soccer throughout his career and at a peak. I think he is also the greatest player to to ever play in MLS. Uh, He has been for a long time, been labored the poster board for for American soccer for many years. But the fact is he he is a three-time MLS Cup winner, one with San Jose, two with Los Angeles, and his influence for both of those teams in that time. Uh, I think stands alone, and as you mentioned, the stats, I think, speak for themselves. He will be the greatest goal scorer ever in that league very soon, and and assists as well. I think he is the greatest to play in the league. Number nine, with the Canucks out of the playoffs, what do the Vancouver Whitecaps need to do to win over non-soccer fans? They need to win, and they need to do so with style. Um, There is so much in the side that can excite the sports fan in the city, pace and skill. Uh, ability uh, and but there's real need but there's a real need for it right now to for it to come together in terms of how they're playing as a team over the next few weeks if they're going to lure those rel- those non-soccer fans to really become potential white cap supporters i would agree they need to win that's number one like you said now they need to do it with some style they have the players that can do so they've got a guy like pedro morales who can be exciting kakuta mane lights up uh, people gets people out of his seats when he makes runs and goes after players, dribbles at players. So those two combinations need to, to, to be it. But the biggest thing is they just need to win. And if they could win a trophy, if they could win the Voyager's Cup, I think that would be huge to win over some of those non-soccer fans. Number 10, which players do the Whitecaps need more from? Well, we've seen the likes of Nicholas Mesquita, Sebastian Fernandez, do some nice things in preseason. Well, now we need those players to step up and do more. Coming in, and we just had him on the show, we heard from Stephen Betasher was, oh, he could generate a lot of assists. He could generate a lot of assists. Well, the Whitecaps don't necessarily have those type of players that they did in San Jose, the big, tall players like... um, uh, Now I'm drawing a blank with uh, the forward that they have up there. Um, But they also have a guy uh, like Wondolowski who always seemed to be in the right position. Well, now he's not getting those type of goals. And Lenhart as well. Lenhart is is the the man I was thinking of. and So they they don't have those type of things. So they need more from Betasher on the offensive side of things. Uh, They need more from Mesquita, from Fernandez. And at some point, they need kenny miller to start scoring goals from open play he's leading the team right now with three goals two of those though are from the penalty spot they need him to start scoring some goals from open play and they need darren maddox to start scoring some goals the floodgates everyone said the floodgates were supposed to open last week i said i don't think they're gonna open they haven't opened they need to open soon Players for me, I, I actually singled out one, but I'm going to actually add another here. Sebastian Fernandez, I think, needs to start showing a little bit more for me. Um, his recent, he, he kind of came onto the scene, created great big buzz, great goal in the opening game, but we haven't seen that much from him since. 
And for me, there needs to be more from him. And I'm thinking Carl Robinson will be expecting to see more from him. But there is one person I really feel we need to see more from, and is the captain, Jaden Merritt. Uh, he needs to show more command in his game and his performances than we have seen so far this season. Tonight looked very hesitant and very unsure at times. And in comparison to one or two things that we saw from Omar Gonzalez on the other side with the LA Galaxy, it was a real contrast for me that really stood out. Demerit has to be better if he's going to get forward to really fulfill the value and the need that he is as being one of the main characters in this team. Got to be more. Got to see more from him. Kobayashi scored a fantastic goal early in the season. Disappeared. Sebastian Fernandez scores a fantastic goal early in the season. So far, has disappeared. Number 11 on the starting 11. What positives and negatives do the Whitecaps take out of a 1-0 loss to the Galaxy? The positives for me was the lineup. They, Robin, Carl Robinson went with a very pacey attacking lineup that was to try and hit, I think, L.A. on the counterattack. I think in a lot of ways, particularly the way they had them stretched, through large parts of the first half, that really worked. It would be very interesting to see him use that same tactic on the road against some other teams that I don't think necessarily have the level of quality of defender and players in front of them as, as L.A. do. So I think it was a good good idea for Mane to get a start tonight alongside Maddox. It, it, it did offer something to the potential what could have happened this evening in L.A. The negatives... There's still so a lot of work for this team, this 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 white cap side, to try and claim against claim results against the elite of MLS. And when they went behind tonight, you could just kind of tell they felt that they were facing a major mountain that they were never going to be able to climb and get over of by the end of the game. They still got a lot of work to do there. Positives for me were some great saves from David Osted, uh, making those saves. Uh, also the excitingness of a guy like Maddox, of a guy like Mane, the fact that they were able to use their pace to get some opportunities. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't score. That's a negative because they only have one goal in three road matches. And as I said earlier, they need to score goals on the road. And then it's just that lack of concentration. We've seen it so many times from the Whitecaps over the last number of years that they have played games extremely well, but they always have those moments of uh, just lack of concentration and they give up goals. And for me, that's the biggest negative coming from the Vancouver Whitecaps right now. That does it for the starting 11. We're going to get into some more discussion about some of those topics and more when we get into the second half of the program. The Vancouver Whitecaps were 1-0 losers against the LA Galaxy. Paul Dolan coming up in about uh, five minutes' time as we go uh, to talk about the, the Whitecaps game a little bit more. And we're going to go around the globe and tell you about a new trip to see the Whitecaps after the break. <laughs> 